If you're anything like me, you grew up stricken with a deep and enduring fear. An unshakable horror of being slowly sucked downwards to a murky doom, having inadvertently stepped into a patch of pure nightmare fuel known as quicksand. And no wonder so many people shudder at the thought of these perilous puddles, given the hordes of big and small screen baddies leave us here to die. and heroes that have perished in quicksand. And they have a point, right? I've been sucked down! Quicksand is a very real and very common, naturally occurring danger from which there is no escape, right? I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. From the Jungle Book to Jumanji, from Lawrence of Arabia to Indiana Jones, film and television is bursting with chilling scenes of Quicksand! swallowing humans whole in mere moments. So popular is this trope that it has even entered the realm of parody. Nest quicksand! Interestingly, quicksand scenes in movies peaked in the middle of the 20th century. Roughly one in 35 feature films released in the 1960s included some sort of scene involving quicksand. Of course, while we're all clearly obsessed with QUICKSAND! We know that you can't believe everything you see on screen. That's why we're all so calm and unfazed by the notion of sinking completely into a prison of sand and mud, never to be seen again. Quicksand really exists? I thought it was just a video game thing! <clears throat> On second thought, maybe it's worth spending a bit of time investigating the reality of quicksand. What actually is it? How does it occur? And how can you save yourself if you're ever unfortunate enough to get caught in its wet, gritty clutches? Right, first things first, what exactly is quicksand and how accurately is it portrayed on screen? Put simply, quicksand is an area of sand that has been saturated by water to the point that it is unable to support and hold any significant weight. Less simply, quicksand is considered a colloid, a scientific term that refers to a mixture in which insoluble particles of one substance, in this case grains of sand, and typically also silt and clay, are suspended in another substance, usually liquid, in this case water. Ordinarily, the friction between the millions of grains of dry sand allows them to tightly lock together and spread any downward force over a large area, easily supporting the weight of a person. Not so with quicksand. As it is a mixture of fine sand, even smaller micron-sized particles of clay, and water, the friction on the sand granules is greatly reduced, preventing them from locking together when compressed. As a result, the mixture behaves far more like a liquid than a solid. So when you step into quicksand, you will immediately begin to sink. Technically speaking, quicksand is a non-Newtonian fluid, in that its physical properties are dependent on the forces applied to it. It is specifically a shear-thinning non-Newtonian fluid, meaning its viscosity decreases with the application of stress. This is why quicksand is often hard to spot. Undisturbed, quicksand behaves more like a solid, not moving or flowing, and perhaps even holding its shape. If a light dusting of drier sand has been blown over the surface, it could be practically invisible. Only when stepped on does the quick part of quicksand become apparent, as the mixture readily gives way to the applied pressure, allowing you to sink down into it. Given the simple composition of quicksand, it's possible for it to form in basically any location where sand or gritty soil and water are present. But how common is it, and where is it likely to be? But before we get to the bottom of this, if you are complacently using the same old web browser you always have, it's time to change it up. Opera has packed its desktop browser with all the tools you need to make web browsing as smooth as possible. Opera is a browser with an integrated AI called Aria. Just hit a quick shortcut to open the command line, and Aria will answer any questions you have about anything. And with the multimodal answers, Aria is enriched with content to suggest links to buy the product you're researching. Need help writing? Switch Aria to writing mode to help generate and refine text. I've just asked for a YouTube description for this episode. Click the continue in chat button to move your query to the side and continue exploring your query here or in a full screen tab. Oh, and now Aria can do some tasks for you like closing certain types of tabs, group, 
pin or save them as bookmarks. Speaking of tabs, Opera groups them by context with its tab islands, which you can expand and collapse to save time. And if you're a multitasker, you'll love split screen. Just drag a tab down to the center and create a second space to work on two things at the same time. Then click the three dots to close. Experience a better browser and switch to Opera by clicking on my link in the description. Quick, let's get back to those pesky puddles of peril, and where precisely you're likely to find them. Being composed of sand or gritty soil and water, they'll tend to be around watery locations, like beaches, lakes, rivers, and marshes. But quicksand can also form further inland and away from obvious surface water if there is an underground source such as a subterranean spring. Of course, the conditions have to be just right. Too much sand and not enough water results in wet sand, which is usually still solid enough to walk on. Too much water and not enough sand makes sandy water, which will obviously not support your weight, but has the benefit of not being almost invisible or hard to move or swim through. It's worth noting, however, that because quicksand only occurs when sand and water is mixed in certain proportions, it's actually pretty rare anyway, and isn't lurking menacingly at every beach or riverside. But so you do happen to unwittingly step into some genuine bona fide quicksand. How dangerous is it really? Are covert pools of human devouring quicksand a mere movie myth, or should we actually be worried? I mean, of course, the scenes of quicksand in films and television are clearly overdramatic and exaggerated. But surely large hidden patches of soupy sand could still be dangerous? Well, yes, it can be, in certain circumstances. But realistically, the danger that quicksand poses to most people is pretty low. In fact, the movie version of quicksand that speedily drags people beneath the surface is actually impossible, for several reasons. Firstly, patches of quicksand usually aren't that deep, so in most cases it's only possible for you to sink a few feet or less than a meter. Additionally, even in an area of quicksand that is technically deep enough to fully engulf you, you'll actually only sink in about halfway. This is because quicksand has a density of approximately 2 grams per cubic centimeter, while the overall density of your average human is only 1 gram per cubic centimeter, which, for the mathematicians amongst you, is roughly half as dense. So, despite the cinematic depictions of quicksand ravenously sucking you in like a hungry monster, physics dictates that once you sink roughly midway down, you will actually start to float. That is, unless you struggle. Remember how quicksand is a shear thinning non-Newtonian fluid? Well, we weren't just throwing around fancy terminology. That means that if you apply stress to the mixture by fighting against it, the viscosity of the quicksand around you will drop allowing you to sink deeper. And when you stop moving around, the quicksand re-thickens into a goopy sandy mass, trapping you even more. So even though quicksand won't suck you down and drown you, getting out of it can be extremely difficult. And this is where it gets legitimately dangerous. For instance, if you're stuck in quicksand somewhere tidal, you only have a maximum of six hours before the water comes in, possibly less. This is far more likely to be how quicksand takes you out, not by sucking you beneath its surface, but by trapping you in place before help arrives. Even if you're trapped in quicksand that isn't near the sea, you could fall victim to heat stroke or dehydration in hot conditions, hypothermia in cold climates, or if you continue to panic and thrash around, exhaustion. In a worst case scenario, getting stuck in quicksand might leave you vulnerable to predators as an easy meal for hungry animals. So, what's the best way to escape if you find yourself actually genuinely properly stuck in quicksand? Well, firstly, don't panic. If you start moving frantically to escape, you run the risk of getting yourself into more danger than you otherwise would be, either by sinking deeper or tiring yourself out. Before you do anything else, remove any and all large backpacks or heavy cargo that you're carrying. Holding onto these will increase your overall or bulk density, so while you may not fully sink, 
you will sink deeper and get ever more stuck. If you can access your phone and have a signal, call emergency services immediately. If you're with people, make sure they know you're genuinely stuck and have them call emergency services. If you're alone but within earshot of others, you can shout to get to their attention so they can send for help. The more people that know you're in trouble, the better. Whatever you do, remember to keep all movements as slow as possible. As we've already learnt, fast movements could exhaust you or get you more stuck, so remain calm. In films and on TV, people often try to rescue victims of quicksand by grabbing their arms or using a rope to pull them out. But the physical properties of quicksand make this extremely difficult. Not only are you dealing with variable viscosity, but attempting to pull a submerged leg out of quicksand creates a strong vacuum which holds you in. Research shows that trying to remove just one submerged foot from quicksand requires the same force needed to lift an entire car. The trick is not to fight against quicksand, but to work with it. If you're close enough to someone or within reach of a sturdy branch, don't try to use them to pull yourself out. Instead, try to put as much of your weight onto them as possible, reducing your weight in the quicksand so you can float. If you're completely alone or no one can reach you, try to orientate yourself so that you're lying on your back. This will increase your overall surface area relative to your weight, allowing you to float more easily. Once you're in this position, you can slowly churn the quicksand around your legs to introduce more water and lower its local viscosity in that area, without causing the rest of your body to sink. Using this method, you might be able to work your legs upwards and out of the sandy slurry. At this point, use your arms to paddle backwards against the surface of the quicksand and gently swim towards safety. Try not to paddle too deeply as this risks getting your arms stuck. Keep this up until you reach solid ground and can pull yourself out. That's the best advice we have for you if you fall into quicksand. At least, traditional water-based quicksand that is. You really don't want to encounter quicksand's far rarer, almost mythical cousin, dry quicksand. The ground, it's sinking! Up until now, we've been talking about regular quicksand that forms in the presence of sand and water. What is it, quicksand? I'm calm. No, it's a dry sand. Pit. I'm sinking. Reports of travelers and vehicles being swallowed up in dry deserts, however, were long considered to be rumor and folklore. That was until 2004, when researchers proved such stories may actually hold a grain of truth. In an experiment carried out at the University of Twente in the Netherlands, scientists pumped air through a container of very fine sand and allowed it to settle. The researchers found that when they dropped a ball from just above this mixture, it immediately sank approximately five diameters deep into the sand, fully engulfing it. This happens because the superfine sand settles into a very loose and fragile structure, similar to a house of cards. And since the overall density of the mixture of sand and air is extremely low, practically anything falling into it instantly sinks straight down. The same danger exists for people working in and around silos filled with grain, which can fully engulf those unfortunate enough to fall in. While the existence of dry quicksand has only been demonstrated in a laboratory, it has been theorized that such conditions could arise naturally, such as following a severe sandstorm. Broadly speaking, quicksand poses far less of a threat to humans than popular media may have led you to believe. But real quicksand is certainly not without its dangers. And while the existence of naturally occurring dry quicksand is unconfirmed, we here at Debunked advise you to avoid it at all costs. Thanks for watching, stay curious but safe, and we'll see you next time.